you. Uh, just before we do intros, I have such a weird history. If you ask me a laser and strange that history, I would say, well, a laser's favorite, right? But historically, they've played like, they're basically like dead even on series one against one another. And that really surprises me. So, it gets me wondering what kind of crazies we'll see today. As in the top left, our Blue Zerg from Team Liquid. This is a laser. And spawning over the bottom right hand side, it is the Red Protoss. It is strange. He's that is surprising though, Wardy, because I would have absolutely agreed with you. I'd have been like, this should be very a laser favored, you know? Like yeah. his his heights have been so damn high. But I guess on the flip side of that, his lows can be low. But in general, I'm like, a laser's a guy that absolutely vies for like top eight in the region, you know? Yeah, so that uh, a laser is 11 to 8 all time in series against Strange and 20 to 15 in maps. Like, I think that's what gets it for me. It's like, to me, that should have been more like, you know, more like 75% of the time a laser wins, right? Because you're sure if they play online and stuff. Now, that said, the last three times they've they've played has been a laser's victory. Strange hasn't won since 2021. But it was, mm -hmm. uh, and, and before then, like, it was a lot of the games happened in 2016. So maybe it's not like super notable. It's just, ah. it was still strange to me that, like, when they have played, Strange has held up so well because a laser was no slouch back then. We're talking about a time where a laser was out, you know, winning DreamHack Valencia, right? So, you know. Was that 20, wasn't that 2017, though, for a laser? Yeah, or? maybe, but like, he's still getting up and being good, right? So, was it oh, 2017? Was getting... 2017 was, yeah. um, was Neeb's year. So, I think it was 2016 yeah, it was... he won. Uh, no, uh, no, I, so, I think Neeb's year, it was a laser that took oh, one of them. The, is that the one that Neeb didn't win? Mm. I think so. I, I, and then the next year, it was all about Serral, wasn't it? Like, mm. um, so I, I think that's my timeline, because I remember when Eliza was on the up and up. It was, yeah, around around 2017, where, you know, he, he kind of... Was it WESG Europe as well that year, where he beat Nurcho in the final, maybe? And, mm. I mean, that was a wild year. Like, Serral lost to Harston 3-0 in the round of 12, for example. Like, mm -hmm. Serral was a good player but not the Serral yep. just yet like everything was wild and crazy back then but you're, you're right no, that... it was 2017 he did get top four in blizzcon in 2016 though so he's still like top tier oh yeah yeah no you're you're right with that one yeah interesting very interesting was that the year that he um beat dark to get there as well i think so i, I think he beat dark Stop. in groups and then like he played special round of eight or something mm. Mm. Tell you what, interesting. Void? <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> Meanwhile, there's a Void Ray on the way. This has become more popular in PvZ. Like, not everyone is doing it, but a few players are like, hey, I like opening up a Void Ray first into an Oracle. Like, this is not the first time we've seen this in this event, even. We saw a bunch of this last week. Um, so, you're going to deny this Overlord super quickly. And for a player like Strange, who does play a bit mysteriously, he does like just knocking down this map control and this vision because then of course he can go and do all sorts of different timings and it's very difficult for a laser to ever get some scouting on what the follow-up is going to be no definitely i mean automatically seeing a void around the go a laser is very quick to pull back all those overlords were on the map that were otherwise you know kind of uncontested gets up a fairly early roach warren as well that's usually a sign that you think you're probably going to get attacked kind of soon but this is already a very different ZVP, and you see Strange, he's just going around, checking if there's two Overlords on the go, but Elaser was very good about just being like, okay, I just need one to scout, one to get the info, and yeah, he's doing exactly what he said. Oracle afterwards, as for how many, we don't know just yet. Usually getting a couple out can be quite nice, but Strange, he's getting pretty heavy on the gas here, and... Yeah, just a cool opening and a robo instead of the Twilight early on. So definitely, definitely a different pace of uh, PVC out of him. Yep, no, oh, absolutely. That robo facility dropping down is about halfway done. The next is coming through from Strange as well. It is just across the board. I, you know what? I can kind of imagine it though, because if he gets a robo or a prism and then goes with some kind of like very powerful push, doesn't really saturate the third. I look at that, I'm like, oh yeah, that's such a strange kind of build. <laughs> so. Maybe something along those lines. Otherwise, we'll see. I mean, he keeps on warping in sentries. Definitely seems like aggression, because otherwise, you don't really need that many sentries. More sentries generally means like, hey, I want to force field your side of the map big time on a big push. No, yeah, definitely. Like, sent so he's been using quite a bit of the sentry for scouting, right? And you see that here. I like this from Strange, by the way. 
<laughs> an oracle, but met it with two hallucinations. It's That's so smart. funky, man. It, it's smart yeah, though, it right? Because you're revealing triple yeah. oracle. You're like, hey, I just went void triple oracle. Meanwhile, immortal tons of gateways. Love it. That is, yeah. I mean, he is playing. He's living up to his name here. And how many gateways we're getting? It's going to be up to like eight. I mean, yeah. This is turning into an old school soul train. Like <laughs> zero tech with it. I mean, a laser has to be on point, and he, he's getting the spore crawlers, so the trick is working here. And he has to figure out what he's up against very soon. And Strange has done a great job of just masking all of this in true mystery. Yep. No, very true, as we do have this uh, army starting to move out. We're going to see it with the Ling right now. Well, the laser just started a few more drones. He definitely wasn't fully aware. Now he sees it. Ravagers start immediately. You gotta imagine more of his production will go in towards units and only units from here. Can he hold this off? 60 army supply for a laser right now. He adds on some links behind it. Obviously, Strange can warp in a ton of units. They are low tech. He's got a lot of sentries, and those sentries are big because they are gonna really dictate how these fights happen. I mean, already catching these queens in the front before much girls can go on is a big deal. We pop the first one of those uh, force fields with the bile. The rest of the bile starting to come through. Guardian shield up. Stasis ward catches a bunch of links in the background, so that's pretty nice as well. Would love to see those zealots starting to get to the oh. front as the void ray goes down to the corrosive files, though. Ouch. I mean, this army just dealt no damage, it felt like. Like, those queens were such a good punching bag at the front, and a laser, all things said and done, he just absolutely murders this push. And he's got links for yeah. days, and remember, those links at the back are going to come alive, and <laughs> I loved all <laughs> the prep out of strange but holy crap i guess that's the reason why we don't see that too much well yeah i mean this was literally a case of like you did probably the best you could possibly do in terms of setting this up and selling this as something else and everything it lasers like on 65 drones and it did nothing so if it did nothing there when did it ever do anything um yeah, yeah a laser did build some roaches so he was a little bit safer than he might have been in other scenarios but yeah, that was a, a very speedy, uh, <laughs> very speedy game number one as the laser takes the 1-0 lead. Wow. Uh, I, <clears throat> you know, I, I often like to look at plays like that because the way that Strange sold it and looked like it was going, I, I, I kind of liked it all, man. It just... <laughs> it got absolutely stomped. He was just... And ev even a laser with the initial queens getting caught, I was like, that doesn't feel that good for him, but... It, that RB was just severely lacking firepower, wasn't it? Like, severely lacking firepower. Just all those units just stay alive for so long. And Biles as well, like, he was very clumped up. Even losing the Void to the Biles. It was brutal. Brutal. Yeah, no, that that's true. The Biles actually connected on the Void Ray, but I just I don't think that mattered, right? The DPS just no. wasn't there anyways, so didn't really do too much. And uh, Laser looking to get a win. Obviously, he's actually only played Protoss players in this event so far. 2-0 Geralt, 1-2 against Skillers. Definitely, with those results, says he has the, the stature to kind of take down a Strange. And this is the first uh, PvZ for Strange this event. So, uh, I'd say a Laser definitely the expected winner. And really showing us in that game one that even if his opponent is going to live up to his name, it's not going to be a problem for him. So, that said, we'll dive into game number two. Where we start out in the bottom right-hand corner with the player that did just take that 1-0 lead. This is a laser. Yeah, Sight Delta spawning over in the top left hand side of the red Protoss. It is strange. A laser doing the same opening again here, where, you know, you do the extractor trick to get out an extra drone, so 15 out of 14. Get up that hatchery nice and early to avo avoid any sort of uh, probe blocking shenanigans, but strange. He didn't do it in the first game, and he's not doing this one either. He's not sending out a very early probe. This is... I think this is what Lambo would label the... <laughs> in fact, what did he call it when Rotterdam kept doing this? It was like the the the, the most inefficient <laughs> one. You know, just you know you're safe, but you don't really get to dismantle yeah. anything or slow anything down. Like, just... Uh, yeah, this shows me that Strange has played probably a lot of ladder, just to make sure he doesn't lose against anything cheeky early on, you know? Mm. I feel like, wasn't it Hawson that nicknamed this uh, the scout timing? I'm maybe. Sure. Maybe. There is. Absolutely. I can't remember what they called it, though. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah, the probe shows up, <laughs> sees a hatch in the pool, and, uh, isn't gonna do much else. 
even pinches a mineral. So I, I, I okay. dare say most of the time you don't you don't want it to get the mineral because yeah. you want to be denying the mining for a bit longer. But now he's like, all right, stole your mineral, mate. What are you going to do about it? Runs away, goes over to the third. Ah, uh, already an okay opening for a laser. But at least Strange can be like, uh, like maybe a laser goes, damn, you didn't do an early probe scout again? Like, I did this early hatch for you doing that and you didn't do it? Yeah. Oh, that, that's actually true. That's the kind of cool thing about changing up your scout timings, right? Like, you, you kind of get the Zerg guessing and stuff, and, you know, if you're going to go for the hatch block every time, then the Zerg can just always, like, 15 hatch or whatever. Whereas if oh, sometimes you do and sometimes boy. you don't, that sometimes the Zerg plays inefficiently because of it. As the Lings do catch that probe, so that goes down, and Lazy will take the third hatch, no problems. Yeah, Laser's definitely going to smile about that one. And that is Stranger's Scout gone off the map. Now, it's not quite Brood War esque, where you can just keep it in your opponent's base forever, but it is meant to get back home. So, uh, already, that's a nice little win for a Laser there, just making sure that's not on the field. And Strange, this game, he's gone for a Twilight Council in his main base. So, not a Stargate. And that, yeah, th this is also the first time we've seen this today in this matchup. Yeah, Twilight Council on the opening, gonna be probably opening Glaives here, unless there's something really funky planned, but two more gates already dropping in, Glaives does seem like the option, and Glaives does start up on the research bar, so we got ourselves resonating Glaives, we're gonna get those Adepts powered, and we'll see if Strange can find some value with those throughout the early stages, again, could kind of link up to kind of what we expect of Strange, where they're gonna see a bunch of Adepts, they're gonna harass, and then obviously once those Adepts have been harassing and all the rest of it, you can obviously sometimes follow that up with a big aggressive push too, so that is an option that awaits us if Strange wants to run that uh, direction. I'm a bit scared for a laser. Like, he's actually yet to get a gas up with all this, so he's, he's going to have a lot of queens and lings out, but Adept Glaives is pretty close to finishing up. I, I, I dare say that he's timed this out quite nicely for himself because it looks like he's going to gun straight into roaches, but Strange's builds today... It's like he came out of a time machine, man. He's like <laughs> the soul train, like back when sentries used to deal more damage than they do. Like, yeah, I'm gonna whip this out. And then it's like, you know what? Let's do this uh, adept glaive stuff. You know, like I haven't seen that for a while. Let's, let's see how it does. And Elise is probably a bit like, oh, uh, you know, I got a really nice scout there on all those adepts. And it's not with a warp prism either. Like this is a one way ticket across the map. One-way ticket. I mean, these devs need to do something here as well. Glaze finishing up. They're gonna get, I mean, two or three drones here, just gunners. Uh, roaches are not ready yet, and obviously as the roaches spawn, they'll not be all collected together either, so... Just gonna be seeing the devs gonna shade back over towards the right, but there's actually a spore crawler in the wall, making a doorway. That means the devs can't oh. get any further than this. Yeah, a laser for a moment there. He's like, damn you, creep tumor, hitting it with that queen there, but... Yeah, uh, this... This is something that... Strange definitely wanted to deal more damage with, but those Adepts didn't get to get in there. So nice spore crawler block by a laser and nice preemptive kind of wall area as well. Like just, just anticipating that kind of stuff. And even though there was no link speed, he's done a good job defending this. And yeah, I, I like how he's utilizing that spore like a shield battery block here that Protoss is doing PvP. Yeah, and using the door. Remember when Serral tried to use this against us in the Katowice semi-finals back in 2020? It was the, uh, the, when Glaze was all the rage as well, and Serral kind of did this to kind of give himself a better chance against defending it. Still lost that series, but it was very innovative at the time. Cool to see someone still using it here and there. It's not the go-to defense, but it can work nicely if you're kind of just not fully ready numbers-wise. You can afford the third hatch to take some damage, but obviously you don't want to deal with the Adept Shade amongst all your other mineral lines. It's just a good little... Uh, way to deal with it as these adepts come through and a shade but again where do you go absolutely nowhere roach is in position so you're not going to ever commit to that we've got link speed coming up on the side of a laser as well by the way so that is continuing up as well do you think a laser is going to stick on hatchery tech here and just absolutely throw it with a bunch of ravages and links i i kind of get the feeling that's what he's going for here and just hoping to catch strange before he's really upped and ready to the next tech yeah, I mean, I think so, right? Because, to be fair, what have the Adepts really achieved? Resources lost? Okay, yeah, you lost, like, eight lings, three drones, a couple queens. I don't know if that's enough to justify the whole Glaive's play, but if a laser's gonna go, he has to go really soon, because the first Colossus is already gonna be out now. Arguably, one Colossus doesn't get a lot done. 
But obviously, if there was ever a second closest, then I'm really worried if Elaze is trying to attack into that, so... I guess we'll find out very soon. I mean, I think he's got to be going right. I mean, he's not droning. Link Speed's finishing. Units in production and nothing else. So we're about to send this here. I guess we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and I mean, it has a big supply advantage, but you got to remember, these roaches don't have speed. This is absolutely a laser with an all-in here. Second robo at the front as well. Force fields are good to get things going, I would say, but Ravagers won't be Ravagers. If they didn't do just that, gets very, very in the face of his opponent here. Show Barry Overcharge does a good bit of uh, regenerating, but I think a laser's just got way too much, man. I think a laser made a very good call and read here. Yeah, is the timing's just spot on as well. Like I say, with one Colossus only, it's like, whoa, oh. how much can you do? Oh, really, a pretty darn good disorder shot. I honestly thought it was going to hit even more. The last second split kind of saved a laser that little bit. As that Colossus falls high ground and Strange is just going to say GG's. This one is going to be done, and it is going to be a laser taking.